and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine with me, Audrey Williams, as your host. You would have heard by now that the National Water Commission has urged corporate area residents to continue practicing water conservation measures as the island moves further into the December to April dry period. Though the appeal came for the corporate area, we want to extend that call to the rest of the country. Start around your home, check for leaks and fix them promptly. Catch water to wash dishes, fruits and vegetables. And be sure to invest in water-saving toilets, shower heads and taps. We kickstart the show with a word of advice, followed by the news. Stay with us. Water again. But me need water for cook. So how me go wash? Let's weather the drought. Start conservation measures today. Check for leaks around your house. Opt for shorter showers over long baths. Reuse water to water plants and lawn. Watch the amount of water you and your family use. Try cooking methods that don't require much water. And if you have a vehicle, avoid washing it regularly. Remember, water is as important as the air we breathe. So conserve our water, conserve our life. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, January 11. Government has made a significant step towards upgrading the Alexandria Hospital in St. Anne. On Friday, January 8, the Ministry of Health and the Northeast Regional Health Authority signed a memorandum of understanding with the Patel Foundation for Global Initiatives and the Mind, Body and Soul Health Ministry. The MOU is to expand the services provided at the community hospital. We will continue to put what we are putting in the hospital and they will put in extra funds for what they have already indicated. The project is to be undertaken in two parts. It's expected to involve expansion of the maternity, pharmacy and dental services in the first phase. The hospital's laboratory and diagnostic x-ray services will be expanded in the second phase. In the meantime, the health minister has stressed that he will be working to ensure that a few bad apples in the health sector don't derail the hard work and commitment of the majority. At Friday's Alexandra Hospital signing, Minister Daly asserted that Jamaica had a good health system with many hardworking staff at all levels. He, however, acknowledged that there were some who were not so committed. We have some nurses that don't care about the patients. We have some doctors who prefer to be on the road than to be in the hospital to fill their times. And they are the minority. They are not the majority. We have some porters who are selling tickets in the mornings for people to go in early. We know what is happening. We know what is happening and we are going to work to ensure that each person in the health system understand what their role is and become accountable to what they are in charge of. The minister urged members of the public to report incidents of ill treatment on the part of health workers. At the same time, he praised the many hardworking members of the health sector who do a good job every day. Trelawney now boasts one of the best public beaches in the island following a $28 million investment in the development of the Burwood Beach, located on the outskirts of Falmouth. The work was funded by the Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF. The upgraded beach was officially opened and handed over to the Trelawney Parish Council on January 7. Tourism and Entertainment Minister Dr. Wickham McNeil says Burwood is one of about 30 beaches island-wide that have been selected by the TEF for development as public beaches. Wherever we can identify beaches that we feel are beaches that would be best kept in the public interest, we are going to acquire those beaches, put the proper infrastructure on those beaches to ensure that they have all the, the amenities, first class, first world amenities for Jamaicans and visitors alike, that these beaches will remain free and open to the public. TEF has allocated some $250 million to upgrade the 30 beaches. Work is in progress on five with the remainder to be developed in phases. Government is looking to increase its cultural tourism sites in Kingston with the construction of a memorial park in honor of the victims of the 1907 earthquake and fire at Greenwich Town in the parish. We are hoping that it will be an attraction, a tourist attraction and we are hoping that the ministry of tourism will be able to maximize on the benefits and to 
apart from the commercial value, we'll be able to use it as one of the sites here in Jamaica. Chase Fund CEO Billy Heaven was speaking on Friday following a tour of Phase 1 of the Memorial Park project. The $15 million park is scheduled to be opened on January 14, the anniversary of the earthquake. Over a thousand persons lost their lives in the deadly earthquake and ensuing fire, and more than 500 persons buried at the site are unidentified. The development of the park is a partnership involving the Chase Fund, the Jamaica National Heritage Trust, JSIF, Tourism Enhancement Fund, TPDCO, Sports Development Foundation, the NSWMA, and the UDC. Mr. Heaven said other phases would include construction of access roads, restrooms, parking lots, gazebo, and enhancement of surrounding communities. The accompanied Maroons of St. Elizabeth now have their own community radio station. A Beng 88.7 FM, which will highlight the Maroon culture, was launched on January 6 during the 278th Akampong celebrations. The radio station's establishment was jointly funded by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, the Jamaica Commission for UNESCO and the Ministry of Youth and Culture, at a cost of $12,500 US dollars. Minister of Youth and Culture Lisa Hanna has urged the Maroons to use the station to tell their stories and strengthen the viability of their assets. Her address was delivered by Director of Culture Dr. Janice Lindsay. The fact is that your story is unique. We encourage you to share those stories widely and to share with the objective of strengthening the viability of the assets that you have. You have a powerful medium, radio, which will give you an excellent platform for managing your assets. She gave the ministry's commitment to assisting with the task of safeguarding the Maroon heritage through its cultural agencies. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller has lauded late trade unionist Lord Goodley for a significant contribution to the nation's industrial climate. At a Thanksgiving service Saturday, Mrs. Simpson Miller said Jamaica had lost a brilliant nation builder and a tireless advocate for workers' rights. That he left Jamaica and the world better than he found it. His advocacy of the rights of workers was not born of narrow self-interests or vested perspectives. His work to advance workers through the National Workers Union and all other professional avenues was grounded in a clear understanding of the realities of the society, the economy, and the global marketplace. Former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson also paid tribute to Mr. Goodley. Lloyd Goodley was a passionate nationalist and a fervent believer in the cause of social equity. He realized the imperative of changing the traditional equation of conflict between worker and management to one of harmony and justice between employers and workers in the building of our nation. Lloyd Goodley passed away on December 14, 2015. He was 76 years old. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health sponsored by the NHF. From joining the call for greater unity in 2016 to the opening of the rebranded Melia Braco village in Trelawney, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller was on the go last week. Take a look. 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 
Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. 
Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Yo, this is DJ Bambino, a.k.a. Trevor Avki, and right now we have a message for all the youths of Jamaica. Remember, crime and violence is not the way to go. Education are the key. The car, the house, the money, the bling, all of that will come. Just remember, a gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Up next, highlights of the major happenings in the Justice Ministry in 2015. For centuries, the vast majority of our people have been denied the right to appeal their cases to Jamaica's final court because our final court is a colonial institution which sits in London. The Ministry of Justice had many achievements during 2015. We review just a few. In 2015, the Ministry of Justice managed the process of passing several critical pieces of legislation in the Houses of Parliament. One of the most significant was the Dangerous Drugs Act, amended to help implement Ganja law reform. The law came into effect in April. We have a, a, a law now in effect that is a multi-dimensional law. Um, it covers so many different aspects of this phenomenon, from human rights to scientific research to commercial possibilities. The Justice Ministry also led legislation to replace the UK-based Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Justice as Jamaica's final Court of Appeal. The lower house gave its assent to three laws while the debate continued in the Senate. This is all about the rights of the Jamaican people. The rights of our people are protected by access to justice, which means access to our courts. And on December 3, the Senate passed two critical pieces of legislation to effect reforms within the justice system. Among the many other laws passed in 2015 were legislation to improve the probate processing system, give the courts greater latitude in cases that carry mandatory minimum sentences, and remove certain evidence restrictions. And on October 16, the Senate passed the Jury Amendment Act 2015 with the House of Representatives following suit on December 1. The halls of justice were also improved in 2015 to provide better spaces for dealing with legal affairs. That included rehabilitative and expansion works on several resident magistrate courts. Among them was the Santa Cruz RM Court, updated to improve access to the disabled community. The installation of this vital piece of equipment will ensure the independence of persons in wheelchairs in accessing what is a two-story building. In July, the ministry received a $1 million donation to purchase 40 new laptops for the courts. Then in August, the Justice Ministry signed a $48 million contract to procure and install a high-density filing system at the Supreme Court's registry downtown. In December, the ministry officially handed over public building north of Justice Square. Public building north of Supreme Court provided seven new courtrooms, four judges' chambers, among other amenities. Over in Montego Bay, the Supreme Court Satellite Registry and Legal Aid Clinic were opened in July. One additional restorative justice center was also established in the second city. During the last year, government and the European Union signed an agreement for the implementation of the Justice Security Accountability and Transparency Project, JSAT. The five-year initiative is to strengthen governance and oversight within the justice system. In the latter part of 2015, the Justice Ministry also signed an agreement with other government ministries and agencies to clarify and expand their responsibilities for the operation of the drug treatment courts. The process of rehabilitation pro provides healing for them and discourages further illicit substance abuse. Also in the year, the Ministry spearheaded the appointment of more than 224 Justices of the Peace. Several High Court appointments were also made. 
justice for one, justice for all. The Ministry of Justice maintained that mission during 2015, achieving top priorities in the year. U.S. parish managers, U.S. regional managers know your role to do your inventory now to see what you have and to mobilize the country. Outreach with communities, outreach with civil societies, outreach with the churches. That is what we are going to do. We are going to call on every single Jamaican. Look around your house, search your house, search your environment, find this mosquito. Join the fight. Eliminate the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Stop the spread of dengue and chikungunya. And keep Jamaica Zika free. Parents, did you know your involvement can make a difference in your child's education? Yes, by simply checking on their progress with teachers, assisting with homework, and playing a part in the school community, children are encouraged to do well. All the studies show that parental involvement with their children in school leads to success. And there's no other way. Parents must take the time. In 1996, a limited liability company was established as part of government's poverty alleviation strategy. The mandate of that company has grown exponentially over the years. Find out which company we're talking about next. With the guiding principles of integration, partnership, community-based participation and sustainability, the Jamaica Social Investment Fund was established in 1996 as a key component of the Government of Jamaica's strategy to eradicate poverty through the promotion of social and economic development for the country's most underserved citizens. In fulfilling its mandate, the JCIF has developed a sterling reputation for transparent procedures and processes and professional and technical competence. As a result of these attributes, the fund has been approached by various entities to assist or oversee the implementation of projects outside the regular JCIP activities. Recently, because of the fund's notable success in targeting and improving the conditions in some of Jamaica's poorest communities, the JCIP has forged a partnership with the Jamaica Public Service Company to invest in building social capital and infrastructure with the objective to increase the access of targeted communities to legal electricity. Additionally, the JCIF was approached by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security to rehabilitate and expand two early stimulation assessment centers on their behalf. The project will see the JCIF managing the procurement and construction management of these facilities. There are plans to venture into non-typical project areas. We are always looking at, at new ways to approach project implementation. I, I think as we develop communities, we must be able to address what affects the individual. And so we will continue to drive and drive and drive towards um, new ways and innovative ways to address the needs of our beneficiaries. Today, the organization is seen as a model for best practices, both locally and internationally and continues to attract new funding from international agencies which have assessed and approved the effectiveness of its approach. Now approaching its 20th anniversary, the agency has so far channeled funds of over 9.9 .9 billion Jamaican dollars towards critical community needs, completed over 1,200 sub-projects in all 14 parishes. In line with its mandate, all projects are aimed at improving the lives of Jamaicans where this assistance is most needed. During the past year, the JCIF continued in earnest, laying the foundation for the implementation of the World Bank-funded 
integrated community development project in 18 communities across Jamaica. The fourth phase of the European Union's Poverty Reduction Program and the CDB's Basic Needs Trust Fund seventh program to ensure that the eventual implementation of the projects will go smoothly. This reporting period represents the final full year of implementation for the Caribbean Development Bank funded Community Investment Project. It should be noted that the project was successful in fulfilling its primary objective of improving infrastructure in education, health and transportation for poor rural communities throughout Jamaica. Much emphasis has been placed on the family support subcomponent of this particular project through the implementation of the Bridge Jamaica project, where poverty is addressed at the household level as opposed to a community one. This is a proven method, which has impacted greatly in countries which have benchmarked this innovative approach. The JSIF has had many successes in making its contribution to nation building through the 1,638 community development projects completed at an approximate approved investment of 11.5 billion Jamaican dollars. Throughout the financial year 2014-2015, approximately 1.4 billion Jamaican dollars was disbursed on projects. During this period, 75 community-based projects were completed at a contracted cost of 1.03 billion Jamaican dollars. The JSIF board reviewed and approved a total of 61 community development projects at an approximate cost of 1.57 billion Jamaican dollars in the areas of education, transportation, health, safety, environment, agriculture, and tourism. These achievements must be credited in a large part to the community members who have contributed to their own development. The JSIF has impacted communities all across Jamaica, reaching approximately 1.6 million persons. These beneficiaries, through their contribution of cash, labor, and project management, have made it possible for the JSIF to expand the reach of its resources. This highlights the importance of creating effective community partnerships in building stronger communities. For its sustained contribution to social development in Jamaica and its use of best practices to enhance and increase returns on investment in communities where its services are most needed, the JSIF was awarded with the 2014 Glena Honor Award for Outstanding Public Service. So JSIF will continue to do its uh, core business, which is community development, infrastructure, and social service programs. But we also are looking to deepen our partnership with uh, ministry and departments and agencies of government. And through this, uh, this year alone, uh, we were able to forge partnerships with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Tourism, the National Irrigation Commission, uh, the Sandals Foundation, the Jamaica Public Service, so uh, the, the, the Citizen Security and Justice Program at the Ministry of National Security. And these partnerships are really a part of our mandate and strategy to ensure the sustainability of projects when JCIP leaves. And so uh, going forward, we will continue to forge these partnerships and continue to link communities with government agencies that will also be, enable them to see to their own development. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Original. And that's our show. We value your feedback, so please keep those emails coming to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. We're also on social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook. Our website, jis.gov.jm, and our YouTube channel are always up and running with all the information you need to know about Jamaica's progress and development. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Audrey Williams. Thank you for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.